Hey Watchaholics, welcome back to my channel. Guys, today we are going to be continuing on our recaps here of Love is Blind Season 3. We're going to be doing today episodes 8 through 10 because I just could not wait. I can't continue to just, I didn't want to do these one episode at a time. I was like, I just want to get into it because the finale is coming and I am just... Who's going to make it? I don't know. I have no idea. But guys, before we get into today's, today's video, if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out and it helps out the channel. It really lets me know if you're really enjoying these videos. But let's just dive right in. So episode eight basically starts off with Colleen being a ballet dancer. Because remember, that is what she does. And I remember listening to this other podcast where somebody was like, what does that mean? Like everyone else has like an occupation, but hers just says ballet dancer. So everybody's like, so does she do ballet like for a living? Does she do it for this like a side thing? Like what is it? But the, uh, the episode opens up with her doing ballet where her coach is there and she's in a studio and she's doing her ballet, showing off her talent. And also talking about basically how the episode before ended, which was Matt giving us some other crazy red flags, saying that he's going to pack his bag because Colleen went to a club at 1 a.m. or whatever on a Wednesday. So a lot of people were saying, and like even myself, like I wish we saw more of it, like, you know, Colleen getting there, him talking to Colleen or something, but that they just didn't show that. Um, and Colleen is just basically, you know, telling us what happened. And basically she got home and told him like, hey, like you can't be acting like this. Um, basically telling him like you need to stop this crap because – you know, it's this is the second time that you're running and that's going to give me doubts. And that ends up becoming like a thread throughout the next couple of episodes where now Colleen is starting to think like, is Matt someone she wants to be with? Someone she feels ready to get married to because obviously he has this issue of like when problems start to pop up that he starts to run away. And she's basically like, I'm done with that. You need to stop this or I'm going to leave. So you know what? That was the first time that I was very convinced in, and, and I actually realized Colleen, she really like stuck to her guns and she was like, no, like this is not right. So good for you. Good for you, Colleen. But hey, so then we move on to Nancy and Bartiz and they're in their house, you know, just two different rooms. They come together and then they're just, you know, basically chatting about all the problems that they've been having so far and, you know, Bartiz keeps bringing up about how this was like a huge uh, the abortion thing was a problem and the whole boyfriend thing and the, he keeps bringing this up and I'm like is the boyfriend thing like is there something more that we don't know did I miss something like how hell heavily involved is he because he keeps bringing it up like a huge issue so I don't know I feel like I'm missing something if did you do you guys did I miss something if you guys know just comment down below because I'm like did I miss something I I don't get it but this was the first time that Nancy was just like, you know, last night you were being, you were acting very immature. And basically to round up last night, he had told her like, looks fucking matter. And he was just like throwing it in her hair, in her face, like about how that it was so important. And he's has so many things going on in his head and he can't focus right now and all this ridiculous stuff. And she called him out on it on his shit. She was like, that's, that was immature. And I didn't like it. So good for you. Good for you, um, Nancy. Now, is she still very much in love with this man? That She doesn't see the red flags? Absolutely. Oh, poor. Poor Nancy. I, I'm really scared for her. I really, really am. Um, but basically, they just decide that they're going to work through it. Bartiz is trying to show her, like, yes, like, we can do this blah, 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 like, I'm going to put all that stuff aside, like, I'm really, you know, connected to you, all this blah, blah, blah stuff, and then he ended it with that stuff I can't say, and we say, oh, like, come here, come here, give me, give me a kiss, give me a kiss, and I'm like, ew, go away, I, every single time he's on screen, I just can't forgive him for his behavior, like, no matter how many nice things he does, I just, one, I just don't believe you, I, I just, I don't, I don't believe you, I don't. But anyway, moving on to SK and Raven. And it was basically, they're just like in their apartment, just laughing, hilarious, talking about each other. They're like, oh my God, like, why do we seem like the most normal? Like everyone else was just like having so much drama at this party. And we were just like, you know, not like, we were so over it. And then they were just talking about how, you know, they're a different couple and how Raven kept saying like, you know, I'm not conforming to a traditional like life as like a wife or everyone wants to have like kids and stay at home and be at home as mom. And she's like, no, like I, I still want to be going to Cabo on weekends and not talk to my neighbors. 
<laughs> that really made me laugh. That one, that one was funny. But in this episode, but with her talking like that, I was like, does she not want kids? I wasn't sure. I was like, does she not want kids? Like the way she's talking, I'm like, if you want to live this life, then you clearly don't want to have kids. But I don't know. Um, but then we get back to um, Zay, uh, uh, where's yeah, Zanab and Cole. You know, he brings her flowers in this really. They're like in a restaurant. He brings her flowers and he apologizes to her for the night before and what he had said, which was the whole party the night before, where he was like, we should switch fiancés, all this stuff because of the whole Colleen and Matt situation. And then she just says, thank you. And it's just silent. And I'm like, this is, this is really awkward. But, you know, he continues to just apologize, like, throughout this whole conversation, like, over and over. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said that. Blah, blah, blah. Says he's happily engaged. I don't know. She doesn't, to me, in, in, that, in that scene, she just didn't seem, like, really, like, she was in it, though. I don't know. She says she loves him, but I don't know. I still have feel hesitation and <laughs> as these episodes go on man this this couple is just absolutely nuts but basically they just keep showing like all these montages of the couples together and like this episode to me was kind of boring because like nothing dramatic happened and I'm like I'm here for the drama like that's the best part and I felt like everybody was just like happily in love and yay we're gonna make everything work out everything sunshines and roses and I'm like it's not but this episode just felt like a whole bunch of like little scenes of just everyone like being happy and in love and like that's great but we all know that there's so much more underneath all of this but basically next we have Alexa and Brennan and they're hanging out with Alexa's friends Brennan's meeting her friends for the first time and they're just all super loud and you can just tell he's like a little bit awkward but Brennan man he's Brennan he is gung-ho for Alexa and he is 100% in I have not I have no doubts I have no doubts at, at this at, at this point in this episode I have no doubts that he wants to marry her and that he wants to be with her like I don't feel any hesitation but then I also don't feel hesitation from her either but because every single time he talks to her he's so about her he's like yes like and, and that's what you would want right in this kind of situation you would want like the person that you're gonna marry that like wants to wants to marry you like he like I don't know I just don't feel any hesitations from him whatsoever at this point but his like her friends were just like oh my god like oh I thought that was like the camera like one of the camera guys and I'm like oh don't talk about Brennan like that I love Brennan and he is a he is a cutie like don't talk about him like that I like Brennan a lot but we're moving on with Colleen and Matt. Colleen basically meets Matt's friends. And, you know, they're just talking like, is he ready? Like this whole point of this conversation was, is he ready to marry Colleen? Colleen goes into the whole night, what had happened. And you find out more details where basically it was like just a whole bunch of miscommunication because obviously everyone's drunk. Matt completely missed, a, didn't remember a FaceTime where Colleen was telling him like, hey, like I'm going to go to the club. Like all this stuff was just, and then that's why, he went crazy because he was drunk and there was just so much miscommunication because he was drunk. Um, but his friends seemed really nice and they understand like what he's gone through and they understand him. I really liked the friendship dynamic here. Um, and then Matt also goes into more detail of, as to what happened to him and his ex-wife, which I was right. She was pregnant and then she goes to him and she he has never heard from her since that day. Um, so yeah, this guy has been through a lot of stuff, which is why he should not be on this show. But here we are here we are um so yeah and the friends just basically tell Colleen you know if he didn't want to be here he actually if he didn't want to be with you he actually would have left so pros he clearly loves her I don't know um so yeah so then we have Raven she um goes with um SK's mom and one of the friends I'm not sure who she was but they all go to get the head pieces that she's gonna wear for the wedding because the wedding is gonna have Nigerian um, aspects to it so she is gonna wear like a regular wedding dress but then she's gonna wear like the head piece that's traditional to Nigerian um, culture and for weddings and she's there and she's like really happy to be there with the mom and then this friend just like or I don't know who she is I can't remember She's a friend of SK, I don't know, but she's another Nigerian woman. And they're all like, okay, let's give you tips on how to be the best wife. And it's just like, 
all of this traditional stuff like make sure you have stew in the fridge and you have to humble yourself even if you make more money than your husband and all this stuff and I was like <laughs> Raven looked like scared shitless she was like what am I getting myself into in that moment I was like girls you are not helping the situation you are making her like really second guess if this is the kind of marriage that she wants to be in but yeah they were just saying like about how like they have to, she has to cook for him and all, all this traditional stuff which at this point though sk should know that like she's not that kind of she's not going to be that wife so i don't know but then we've got um Bartise and Nancy um and they go to learn a dance and nothing fun happens they're just learning how to do, do a salsa dance and he just keeps talking about again about the abortion and the ex things getting in the way I just feel like it's just like the same thing every freaking time he's on screen and I'm pretty much over it so then you've got Cole and Zay there um we find out that um Cole decide, Cole said that his parents will meet Zay, but only after the wedding. Um, they put their their key on like their this lock on a bridge, and they're all like in like it's just like all lovey dovey stuff from now on. And I just kind of got a little bit like a little bit bored, honestly. They're on this love bridge. He pretends he's gonna he he dropped the locket in the the in the in off the bridge, but turns out it was just a fig. He puts it on. They're all like everything's great. I love you, honey. Okay. That's just for this episode because stuff will get crazy as we go on. But okay, then we move on to the women trying out their wedding dresses. Everyone obviously looks beautiful. I always wonder, I'm like, are they like, here, you have three choices and you can pick your best one or can they go and just buy whatever dress they want? I don't know. Because sometimes I can tell that they do end up not wearing the dress that they wore during this montage of them. You know, each each girl will come up and then they talk about their you know, their moms are there, their friends are there or whatever. And they just show them putting on the dresses and having a moment with their dress. And, oh, my God, it's really exciting, which I bet it is. Um, and then you also have at the same time the guys getting their suits fitted. And all the guys have, like, their friends there. Bartice has a sister. And, like, this conversation was so weird to me because it made me think. I was like, does Bartice's sister, like, not like Nancy? Because the way Bartice was talking – to his sister about Nancy he was like oh you know like I just want you to like really fall in love with her and all this stuff and I was like why doesn't she did I miss something like why doesn't she like Nancy is it because of the abortion thing like what I don't know I don't know what it was but yeah it really just really 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 threw me off and then while I was watching this I was like wait a minute Colleen's family hasn't met Matt's family did I miss something like I was like hmm that's weird and then the whole time, the only thing I can think about while the guys were getting their tuxes, especially Cole, was how much he needs a haircut. You know, that's something I always notice in, like, shows is, like, guys that need ridiculous amounts of haircuts. I'm like, you need to, you need a haircut. You're on TV. Please do your hair. Like, you are on TV. And you, have, you need a haircut. Bad. So then we cut back to Zinnab and her stepmom. And this part was actually very emotional. Basically, you know, her parents died, as you guys know, at a very young age. So her mom's not there. And she has her sister, you know, FaceTime in from London. And it is a very emotional moment, you know, because that's when her mom, you know, Z Zay's like, oh, you know, my mom's not going to be here, is not here for this moment. And, and I really wish she could be. And it was, it was really, it brought me to tears. I'm not going to lie. I, I teared up on that scene it was actually very very um moving and because obviously that's like a dream for a uh, for many women is to have their mother there while they pick out their wedding dress so uh, that really whew, that really really hit me but then we get on to the ending of the episode and pretty much you know I feel like this was like Raven's like a getting spicy moment and Raven to me is a character that throughout this whole season has been like up and down like there are times where I really like her and then there are times where I'm like mm. at the end of this episode she was kind of in in my mind she was more of like mm -hmm. because SK just kept saying like hey my mom is still worried about the aspect thing your parents aren't going to be there or your family's not going to be there and that's very important in Nigerian culture and we do view families very differently and Raven's Raven was like well what do you want like what do you want like me to do for your mom? Like my parent, my mom and my grandma aren't going. I have a very small family and they're not coming. Like, like, what does she want me to do? 
what is she gonna be mad because I can't because like she can't have it her way I was like oh my okay okay <laughs> Raven don't talk about SK's mom like that she's a very nice lady um but and I did that one thing I did notice about this episode was the way she talked about her family she didn't mention her dad so obviously she was raised by her mom and her grandma and her mom must be white because she does say she did say that she was raised predominantly in like a white um neighborhood in a white fa- or her the white side of her family so i'm going to assume her dad is not part of her um of her life uh because she did not mention her dad once she just talked about her mom but yeah i don't know i don't I, it was just i don't know it was and she was like oh why are you trying to find problems and i was like what is she saying what do you mean like trying to find problems i was like did i miss something like has sk like behind the scenes or behind the cameras been saying stuff to her because like as of this point i haven't noticed him like trying to find problems in anything like he's just been very like oh my mom but like you know she's just a little bit worried because family is a very important part of our culture and i'm like okay i understand that but i didn't think he was like trying to find problems in my opinion i don't know it didn't seem like that in my opinion i don't know just saying Okay, so then we're going to be, that was the end of that episode. So let's move on to episode nine. Um, Okay, so we start off with (laughs) Nancy and Bartiz go to the store. And this is Bartiz's way of being like, of trying to show that he's committed to Nancy. I don't know how he feel about it. Because he was like, oh, you know how I told you in the pods that like, when I get married, like, I want to have, or, like, my tattoos, like, I want to have my mom, my sister, like, all the women in my life, like, tattooed, and then he's like, you, my potential wife-to-be, and usually when people say, like, my potential wife, or my maybe wife, or the wife that I'm gonna marry, to me, you're not sure yet, because you're not, like, you, my future wife, he's like, my possible, he said, my possible future wife, possible, and that scared me, if someone said that to me, I'd be like, possible? We're getting married in like three days. I I am or I'm not. What, what do you mean by possible? Um, but he, instead of getting a tattoo, he's like, we're not getting tattoos today. We're getting permanent bracelets. Per- permanent bracelets? Like, I don't, I don't understand that. What the heck is a, pot- is a permanent bracelet? A bracelet will come off. I don't know. They both got bracelets like together basically and they were like, um ironed on or something I don't know what they did but they just like you can't like take it off I guess like yeah you can cut that off but you can't there's no like a how do I say like a clasp or anything basically so that was like his way of being like oh I'm so committed to you this is me showing and I was like yeah well you didn't get your name tattooed on your body so you're not really that sure are you (laughs) just saying and then we move on um, to another couple, Alexa and Brennan. Brennan is learning about Jewish weddings and about the Jewish culture. He's with Alexa, her dad, and her grandpa. And, you know, the dad's talking about some book. I forget what it was called, but it's basically the a prenup. And I'm like, Jews and their money. They don't play. They really don't. They really don't. Because um, even in a even in a religious, like, ceremony, they're like, oh, no, there there is a prenup in this. There is a prenup. I will be making sure you're not taking my money if this if we get divorced. So I thought that was so funny. Uh, but okay, we're moving on to Cole and Zay. And here we are, more learning of the dance moves. I don't remember this happening last season. Did every couple like go and get like dance classes for the wedding? Like this seems to be a thing this season, but whatever. Um, they have them, you know, learning a dance. And in my opinion, I thought this montage was so long and unnecessary i was like i really don't need to see zay and cole dancing for like five minutes i really don't music's beautiful i love the soundtrack this season by the way love 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 the songs they're choosing but (laughs) i don't know i wasn't i just didn't really care i was like can we keep going i just don't really care but yeah you know she's just talking about how sad that her dad's not gonna be there and understandable you know she's not gonna have a a first dance with her dad and Cole just continues to reassure her about how mad he is about her and you know they this is like this episode and the last episode are the only ones that like well in the beginning of this episode are the only ones that are just like okay like 
they're not going through a really bad time. Because I feel like for most of the like episodes one through seven, and all they've done is like argue, and it's just like you have no, you've never seen them be like happy. Nothing ever looks happy. It's just always like passive aggressiveness, immatureness, and just oil and vinegar, oil and vinegar, guys. Um. So yeah, so then we've got Matt and Colleen, and this is when we finally meet Colleen's family. And I was like, okay, so I didn't miss anything. They actually have never met Colleen's family. Okay, good, good to know, good to know. Um, so you've got um, Colleen's family. They seem very nice, not very in-your-face kind of people. They don't live in Texas, which is why I think they hadn't, They, they it took a while for them to, to do this part, I guess, because they were, I think they're from Pennsylvania? I think I think it's Pennsylvania, um, but yeah, um, you know, even the family's like, yeah, she keeps things to herself. She's they're not very like open people. They're kind of very light hearted and keep things every everything surface related. I was like, okay, makes sense. Um, but then Matt leaves, and it's just the three of them, Colleen and her parents, talking. And you know, she does mention like her concerns about him like running when shit hits the fan, basically, which is valid. Like it's like valid and throughout this whole episode really she really expresses her concerns about being able to say yes and her concerns about whether Matt is going to be the right one for her you know so then uh which I mean I understand I completely understand so then you've got Raven and SK and they're on these gondolas like, okay, basically in this episode, every couple is going on, like, on a cute date before, like, the weddings. So you have Raven and SK going on these gondolas. <laughs> and, like, you know, he kept saying, like, the whole time, like, we're not basic. We're not simple people. Like, I'm like, um, this is a very interesting gondola ride. They're just, like, in the middle of, like, some pond. It was just really funny and weird, but but at the same time, like I know some people were like hating on the gondolas. I didn't really care. I just thought it was funny, and they did give a nice moment for them in the gondola. I did see like I will say that was the moment where I felt like Raven was actually into SK because for most of the season, I feel very like like she's kind of just been like meh about SK, but like in this episode, all of a sudden it felt very like real. Like I could tell that she was like into him. Now I don't know if I feel this whole like chemistry and spark and energy between them but I could tell that she was into him and she was really believing in this process and what was going on um so yeah like I, they seemed to have like that they could feel that they had a good connection now do I see it through the screen where it's popping where I'm like yes 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 fireworks at the screen no I don't feel that per se but I do feel that like they believe themselves that they have a connection and I could see it more from Raven so I like that progression would has been nice to see because in the beginning she was very like standoffish in my opinion um so then we move on to Colleen and Matt and they're at this date on the aquarium and it looks so like so pretty. Like I was like, I want to have a dinner in the freaking aquarium with the fishies around me, like above. Like, I was like, oh my God, like that looks fun. I like that. Um, and this is cracks me up is like Matt's like, oh, we've had little fights here and there. And I'm like, Matt, little fights? We've had little fights? Matt, you have literally threatened to leave and pack your bags and have actually packed your bags twice don't tell me that these are little fights because these are actually very big fights that mean a lot that are showing a lot about what is going on in your mind right now so mm, yeah yeah um so then basically Colleen is admitting to Matt Matt is just like do you think you can marry me like if if you had to say yes tomorrow like would you would you be ready to say it and he just keeps and Colleen's kind of like kind of like beating him on the bush like she's like well and Matt could tell that she's just not saying what her he's just like say it just say it say it come on stop playing games just say it I'm like you're being annoying now just just say it but basically she said no to feeling that she was ready to get married like tomorrow and I was like oh my What the fuck is going on in here on this day? At least she's being honest. You know, at least she's being honest. I'll I'll take it. Um, I was like, oh, well, damn. 
<laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if they're going to make it, to be completely honest. I, mm, I'm a little bit worried for them. Just a tad bit. I'm a little bit worried. Um, but we move on to Zane Cole on a yacht. All in love. Yay. Oh, God. This season. I mean, this episode with, I was just like, all right. Anytime that they were like, it's, it's actually sad that I'm saying that because every single time that they've been like all like happy and like everything's great. I'm like, this is boring <laughs> because I just want more. Like I want, because, and I think it's because I don't really necessarily believe in them. I'm not, and that's sad because I'm not necessarily rooting for them as a couple. Like I want them to succeed, but I don't feel that way. I'm kind of just like, I don't think you guys are good for each other. So this whole like saying that you are good for each other and that I can see you being a husband now, like these last couple of weeks or this, these last couple of days have really shown me that you could be a good husband. And I'm just like, oh man, I don't know how I feel about it. I really don't. I really, really don't. Um, so I was just like over it. And these montages were too long. I was like, can't. let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the good stuff. So then we have another romantic couple, Brennan and Alexa. Like, they're in, like, this, like, theater. They're, like, rode in a motorcycle on the way there. Very cute. But see, like, like this is interesting. Because, like, Brennan and Alexa have never had, like, any drama whatsoever. But, yeah, I'm, and, like, they've always been pretty much, like, pretty, like, lovey-dovey and stuff. And I just can't. I'm rooting for them, even though they're kind of boring and like kind of like the opposite with Zay and Colleen because, I mean, not Colleen, Zay and Cole. And it's because like, I think it's just because I don't believe in them as a couple, but Alexa and Brennan, like I want it to work. And I think it's because I really like Brennan. I don't know if I love Alexa or if I don't necessarily love them together, but I want them to work out because they seem the most confident about each other. Um, and if they don't get married, like I seriously think – I'd be shocked. Like, I would be shocked. Um, but he was so cute. He, like, kissed her hand. And he's just like, I have no doubt that, like, like I love you. And I'm you're going to marry you. And, like, oh, my, like, that man is a treasure. I can't. He is a treasure. The, and I, I think he's the only one that I actually believe is in love with this person. Like, like I said, I, I'd be shocked if he said that he didn't want to get married. Or that he, or if he says no at the altar, I'd be so shocked. Because then that would mean that I definitely, that they cut stuff that we didn't see. Because it just does not seem like he's going to say no. Um, but yeah, no, he's a treasure. He's a treasure, I can't. Um... So then we move on to Nancy and Bartise. They're on their sedate in like a really nice high rise building. They're all talking. Bartise is just talking, 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 talking. Talk, 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 talk. Shut up, bitch. Shut the fuck up. Every time he's on screen, I just, I can't forgive him. I can't. He's just so, he's just saying like all these grandiose things and about how, you know, he does love her and all this stuff. And I just don't believe him. And, it's not that I believe, like, he's a bad guy. Like, I think deep inside he is a good person. I just think he, like, Nancy is just not his person. And it makes, and it hurts my heart because you could tell that Nancy really, really is in love with this man. Like, when she talks to him, yo, I see it in her face. I see it in her eyes that she is in love and she believes that Bartis is the one for her like she has no doubt in her mind and like I said at this point I was like she's definitely saying yes like she is so in love with him but I don't think that Bartis is into her I don't think that he is ready to be with her and that that's sad I don't think she is his person and unfortunately I think the whole physical attraction thing is really is really effing with his mind Ever since, like, the whole reveal of who Raven was. I think that really, really just, bah, I don't know. So, I don't know if he's going to say yes, guys. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in a comment below. So, then we end on some crazy ass shit. And this is what I was waiting for. This is the only thing that made the episode, really. Because I was like, alright, let's get into the drama. Let's get into the craziness. That is love is blind. Because I know. I know there is some crazy shit. So basically, Cole is like cooking dinner for Zay because Zay gets home and he's like, oh, you say that I never cook you dinner, so I've decided to make you dinner. Cute. Go, Cole. But then 
Zay gets into her passive aggressive controlling self and she's like oh what you can't even make uh, chicken oh you're gonna make this or you're gonna do this and like she's just trying to control the whole situation like let him cook for you he said that he was gonna cook for you and guys don't get me wrong I've been there I've definitely done that before where like my boyfriend is trying to cook and I'm like wait why aren't you doing this or and then he's just like let me cook and I'm like he's he's right he is right so um I think he wanted to make it like a fun like date night and he takes out she opens the microwave and there's like these balls in it. She's like, what is this? And then he's like, ha ha. He gets like a Nerf gun and he starts like shooting it at her. And she's like, what the hell? And she's just so uptight. Guys, oh my God. Like just have some fun with your man in the kitchen. Like this could like really just let the playfulness be. But I just feel like she is so uptight and Cole is so not uptight. He needs someone that is willing to play with him and also be that like strong hand. Like, no, we're going to do this, but also be able to like have fun with him. He really wants that. And I was just like, this escalated. Like, like they were, she was fine. She was happy. And then the moment she realized that he couldn't cook her dinner, wasn't doing it right or doing it the way she wanted, she like shut down. And then this is when her shutting down causes Cole to become an asshole because then now he's just like, I don't understand. Like I get two sides of you and granted, I believe that. I do believe that she has her moments where she can be like nice and have a little bit of fun, but she never really truly lets loose. But because she starts acting in a very like controlling kind of way, Cole gets very like, well, what the fuck? Does she want to marry me? Does she want to be with me? Like, why is she peeved by me? And he continues to say that in this argument where he's just like, I don't want to be with someone who's peeved by every single thing that I do. True. But then he just con- he just goes down this spiral where then it gets a little bit of a hand because then he just asks her if she's bipolar. He's just like, are you bipolar? With like this like snark in his face. And I'm like, fuck, Cole, you had a point and then you decided to act like this. So then now you're an asshole for acting like this when you had a point. So she just gets really mad and she like walks out. And I was just like, oh my God. And, and like, I get where he's coming from. She does kind of treat him like he is inferior to her and that she is kind of like, I don't know, like treating him a little bit like a kid. Like, and I'm not saying that he's not because you can tell that that he is very, like he is immature. And at one point he will, he can be a good guy and, and that there is something there. I just think that they just don't go well together. He needs somebody that is not as uptight as he, as, as Zainab is. Not Zainab, Zainab. Like, you know, I feel like she is way too like, way 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 too res- not reserved but just a little bit i hate to say the word controlling but like she needs somebody that is more of like just more mature and, and someone who's a little bit more serious and not necessarily someone who wants to like play games all this time and have fun and not have fun everyone likes to have fun but you know what i mean like just a little bit more like playful i think she needs someone a little bit more a little bit older a little bit her age in my in my opinion so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Like, at the end of this episode, I was like, oh, Lord have mercy. I do not know how. Are they going to say yes? I don't know. I really, really don't know. I, mm, I don't know. So then we go on to episode 10. And this episode, guys, I didn't want to get to the end before we continue because the end really, really effed me over. I was like. So let's just get to the beginning. Let's get to the beginning because it's going to get good. It's going to get good. We're going to get there. Uh, so it starts off with the end of the fight. You know, Cole and, and, and Zinnab just, you know, Zinnab comes back. And he's just like, you know, that's just me being me. I'm really sorry. Uh, Cole's apologizing to her for, for acting like that. And just basically just keeps saying, like, a very large part of me, like, wants to marry you. And I'm just like, I don't <laughs> They end up apologizing to each other and everything at the end. But, like, I don't know. I'm still very indecisive about this couple. I don't know if I think they're going to say yes. And if they do say yes, I don't know if they're still together or will make it. I don't know if they're a, a Cam and Lauren. I don't know. I don't see it. But we move on. We're going to the bridal party and bachelor parties. And I don't really want to talk too much about this because I felt like it was neither here or there. 
the girls have like a pool party and like they discuss all about like their guys and how their things are going. The boys are at a rodeo fun Texas, nothing says more like Texas than going to a rodeo party. SK is like, what the fuck am I doing here? I am not into this. So that was hilarious. Um, and so what, one of the, the important conversations that were ha- that was had at the pool party was Zay opening up about Cole's family not wanting to meet her. And it was very odd because the family doesn't want to meet her or talk to her before the wedding but they follow her on Instagram which I thought was very freaking odd but they're like no we don't want to we don't want to meet her over zoom we don't want to talk to her on the phone and they showed them like a like when she they saw pictures of Zay they basically told Cole like oh she's not the type of girl that we expected you to be with and that raises a lot of questions for me because I'm like is it because she's not white is that what it is like I mean I actually don't know I don't think she's white but like is that what the problem is? Like, what what is the issue? Why would you follow someone on Instagram but not want to meet them over Zoom or something? Like, at least even the Ravens family isn't going to be, like, at the wedding. Like, they've met SK over Zoom or FaceTime or whatever. So they know who he is. But, like, you don't want to marry – you don't want to meet the, like, the woman that's going to marry your son? Like, what? What the heck? I don't get it. And then Alexa was just, like – Re, like was going in on Cole just being like he's a child you're so above this guy do I agree yes I agree with Alexa absolutely but she was going in I was like man she there is mm, some piping tea there t t t um so yeah like she was just going in on how like Cole was not the right is not the right guy for her and all this stuff then the girls are at the strip club really don't want to talk about that because it's just a whole bunch of like shots of the girls like having strippers and putting money on their boxers and just seeing guys and these and their stuff flopping around with you can definitely tell there's some socks and that stuff whatever I don't want to talk about it it's not my scene um (laughs) and I'm like Raven literally was just like um I'm too grown for this this just makes me want to miss my man and I'm like that would probably be me. I would. That is not my vibe. I would have been like, get me out of here, please. Um, but then they show the guys at their party. They're talking to their families more about like, are they, you know, SK is very like, yeah, like I'm ready. His brother's like, yes, like I can see that you're ready. Blah, 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 all this stuff. Matt is talking with his, like one of his best friends. And, you know, I was happy that Matt realized that he does have issues. Um, and I applaud him for that, at least for realizing like, oh my God, like I know that I've been in the wrong, like I've been running and like that's like, because I have an issue I know that I'm traumatized you know like he was like very open about knowing that he really really does have issues but he still hasn't realized maybe he was thinking that moment like why the hell did I come on the show why why did I come on this show um but yeah so then we move on to um Bartise's family and he's like talking to his friends about um or talking to his friends about Bartise's Bartise is talking to his friends about the family meeting and how it was a huge negative meeting and I was like yeah it was a disaster because of you you brought up the freaking abortion thing so uh (laughs) if you knew your family was going to be against abortions then why the hell would you bring it up to them the first time that Nancy's meeting your family? I can't get over that. That literally, I can't get over that conversation. Like why, would, why, Bartiz, why would you do that? Anyway, <sighs> moving on from that. I'm very passionate about that. Moving on to the first marriage The first I do, the first wedding, and it is Raven and SK. And SK is sounding confident. Raven is as well. You know, the big thing that basically, you know, SK is having is the whole family aspect. He's finding that's still a bit of an issue. Or not an issue, but like he's like concerned about that a lot. Um, But he's sounding very confident. He talks to his mom. And then, like, oh my God, they had a beautiful, beautiful uh, moment. Um, Like... Her mother, um, what's it called? Uh, SK's mom comes over and like helps her put the, um, the head wrap on. It was such a beautiful moment between the mom and um, 
and Raven. I thought that was very, very beautiful. I love his mom so much. She's just so supportive and wants her son to find love. That's like what you can tell more than anything is what she wants for her son. Um, it's beautiful to see the culture aspect of the wedding was lovely. I loved seeing that on screen. Getting to see the Nigerian culture being put on screen was wonderful. I loved it. I loved that all the guys were dressed in Nigerian um, clothing and for wedding. Like, it was beautiful. Um, and Raven, you know, like, you know, it was just really, really nice. Um, Raven is looking beautiful in that dress oh my god her dress was oh she looked stunning in that dress I could not believe how beautiful that dress looked on her I was so jealous I was like I should go and do Pilates like now she got me I was like I should go do Pilates Whew, she looked so good um but yeah you know Eve Raven was breaking down her friends were there everyone was dressing up it was like the first time that like it was the realest I feel like I had seen Raven the whole season. It's like episode 10 and now is like the moment where I was like, wow, like Raven has come a long freaking way. She was really in the moment. I really believed that she loved SK. Like she had come full circle in my opinion by this point. I was like, wow, what a adjustment. Like, not an adjustment, but wow, like what growth she's had. Um, but yeah, everyone's crying. Oh my God. Raven, I was just, I applaud her because at this point I think she had come a very, very long way, but his mom's crying. It's, it's all beautiful. You know, her, his mom is talking, SK's mom is talking to, to SK and, and she's crying and, and you could just tell, like I said, she just wants her son to be happy and to find love. Um, but we get to, um, everyone's walking down the aisle Raven comes down the aisle and oh my god she looked so stunning oh my god with the headpiece her makeup was on point her hair her body she just looked like a 10 a 20 oh she looked fabulous um so she's up there and um you know they give each other the they give each other they they do the the uh the vows and SK is like giving this wonderful vow. He's like, oh, I love you. All this stuff. She's saying the same. I'm like, okay, I think they're going to get married. This is going to be it. They're going to they're gonna get married. They're going to do the damn thing. And they ask SK, um, you know, they go first before they, they're like, okay, you know, this is the time we're going to decide if love is truly blind. SK, do you take Raven to be your wife? And he said, and the tension, the tension, it gets me with the tension. Like they really went in on the, my fly was down. I was like, <laughs> um, really, really goes in with attention. My God, the music, the music really can make a show. Really, really can make a show. But he says no. He said no. I was well. When I tell you I was shooketh, I was, for, I literally screamed. I was like, what? What? Oh my God. I was shooketh to my core. He said, no, everyone is shocked. The mom is shocked. The mom is literally like, like mouth dropped. Like she just, oh my God. But Raven, I will give it to Raven because she handled that like a freaking pro guys like a pro she like hugged him she said oh it's okay like you know it, it's it's fine and she hugged him and she kind of laughed and you know she was trying to hold in like how sad she was and she was just trying to keep herself like positive in the moment even though this guy has just said no I don't want to marry you in front of everyone your friends and your family well, not her family but her friends were there they were all dressed up Everybody was, I think everybody, even on SK's family, were like, what? We, dude, we thought you were going to say yes. What the fudge? Um, so, yeah, but she handled it like a pro. Um, but, you know, she, you know, Raven goes back to her room and, and she's just, you know, sad, obviously. And she's like, oh, but I understand. The re I understand, you know, it, it, it is what it is. Like, she understands. And then there was this moment that really just touched me. And it was the SK's mom, SK's mom went and talked to her and hugged her and said, I'm so sorry. 
I, I was really excited to have you as a daughter-in-law. I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't understand. I don't know what happened. I really do not. And she was, then you know, it, you could tell that there really was a bond growing there and a love for each other. And it broke my heart. SK's mom broke my damn heart in that, in that scene. And, and then they asked Raven and Raven's like, you know, if she would have said yes and Raven said, I was going to say yes. I was like, oh my God. Oh, my heart. My heart went out for Raven and, and SK's mom in that moment. It was, oh my God, broke, broke me. It broke me. So then we um, end up, so we're going to our second wedding now. And it's Nancy and Bartiste. Um, my God, it sure has been a roller coaster with Bartiste. It sure has. Um, I believe that's what, what's her name? Nancy says, like, how it's been a roller coaster with him. And I'm like, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they show her getting dressed with their family. Her mom's there. Her dad's there. Her brothers are there. And she looks beautiful as well. She has these beautiful, this beautiful extensions being put in. And she's so excited. She's so, like, you have no idea. That, like, you have no doubt in my mind that she's going to say no at this point. Um, she looks beautiful. Oh, my God. She looked wonderful. She gave these she sends like a little gift over to Bartise while he's with his friends and it's like a little like small gift package which is like little small moments and at first you're like why is she giving him toothpaste why is she giving him vitamins like what if this is weird but then Bartise breaks down and the and the producer goes after she's like Bartise are you okay Bartise is like in the room like sobbing like she gave me vitamins because I always forget my vitamins and she's just like babe did you take your vitamin and then the toothpaste means that like I always I forgot my toothpaste when we were on vacation together and she had to give me hers and I was just like oh okay this is a very sweet gift in that moment I think he was crying because he was like fuck my life I can't believe I have to say no to this woman I think it was him crying not because he was so in love with her I think it's because he knew how much she loved him and that he was most likely going to be saying no. He wasn't sure he was going to be saying yes. And I think him seeing all those gifts, seeing what she did, she was like, he, I think that hit him like, oh my God, I'm a horrible, I'm going to be, I'm going to break this girl's heart. And that hurts me. Because obviously like breaking someone's heart is also a hard thing. It's not, you're, you know, when you break someone's heart, you're also sad because you don't want to see that person in pain. So I think that's why he was crying but I guess we will see um uh he gives her a gift but her gift is just a literal tequila shot that says let's do this babe and I'm like wow you really had no idea she was all sentimental women ha! women um but okay we get to the you know walking down the aisle the, de the parents are there the parents just seem kind of like meh I don't know. Like, I don't think his his parents are, like, really on board. I think they're kind of like, I don't think you should be with Nancy kind of thing. I don't know. I didn't get that vibe that they were really into Nancy. But, obviously, we can – Bartiz did say they're kind of not there yet. But, whatever. Um – so we get to, you know, she walks down the aisle. They're both there. They give do the vows. And Nancy is, like, so in. Like, absolutely so in. And, you know, they ask, is love truly blind? All that stuff. And they say, Nancy, do you, Nancy, do you um, take Bartise, et cetera, et cetera? And she says yes. That's it. She said yes. She's in it. She said yes. She said yes. And then... They're like, okay, Bartise, do you take Nancy to be your bride? And then they freaking cliffhanger us. They cliffhangered us. Ah, they're they made they're making me wait a freaking week. Well, I mean, I, by the point I'm recording this, it won't be a week. The sh that episode should be out in like a couple of days. But guys, watch Holics, guys. <laughs> I can't take the suspense. I want to know if he says yes or no. I think he's going to say no, but only because of the clips that they've shown where like Nancy's running out with somebody that the brothers is like, we wasted all of our time for this wedding or like this was a waste of time or something like, I don't know. Either something else happens like does Barty say, hey, I need a moment. Like, I don't know what it is, but I think he says no. I think he says no. And honestly, it might be better if he says no because in that way, Nancy can move on and find someone that is actually for her. That would be good. That would be the best. 
But anyway, guys, that was the end of episode 10. And episodes 11 and 12 are going to be coming out. Don't worry, I will be doing a recap to the finale and to the reunion. I might even be doing a reaction video to watching the finale because I know it's going to be crazy and it probably would be really fun to do like a live reaction to that. So I might be doing that. Um, but... Yeah, this episode was great. Episode 10. I like when getting to the weddings is always really, really good. Um, the other episodes were, eh, they were okay. But episode 10, good, good, good episode because shit was getting real now. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please, please don't forget to click that like button. You'll let me know if you liked this video. And if you're new here, please click that subscribe button so you'll know the next time I post a video. Click that bell so you definitely know when I'll have a new video out. And if you are actually, if you're listening to my podcast as well, please don't forget to rate and review. And I will see you guys for the finale of Love is Blind Season 3. See ya!